Hi, this is Gauss of Gauss. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a very important case known as Engel v. Vitel involving the First Amendment, specifically dealing with religion and the rights of students. And so just to give you some background, the First Amendment with respect to religion includes two important clauses. One clause being the free exercise clause, and that basically prohibits the government from interfering with your right to practice your religion. And if you remember another previous case that we've talked about, Wisconsin v. Yoder, that involved the Amish's right to stop sending their kids for formal education past the eighth grade as it interfered with their own religious beliefs, which the Supreme Court of the United States agreed that compelling the Amish students for that particular reason to go to school would be a violation of the Free Exercise Clause. In this case, we're going to be focusing more on the Establishment Clause, which prohibits the state from having a state-sponsored religion. The state, meaning your government, is not allowed to favor one religion over another. It's supposed to basically not interfere with any of that, not favor one, not be against one, basically have no position whatsoever. So the background here, and this comes out of New York State, that every day both students and teachers voluntarily said a school provided prayer. And again, key word here being voluntarily. You were not forced to, to say it as a student. And the prayer is here quoted directly, Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee, and we beg thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country. You'll note that this is non-denominational, right? It does not talk about one particular religion over another. It does not imply any preference for one religion over others. So it's very, very down the line, but certainly you are mentioning God. Um, and as a result... Um, students who did not want to participate could remain silent if they so chose to. However, the plaintiffs, among several, are going to include two Jewish families, a Unitarian, uh, someone who's also non-religious, and they're going to claim that this particular prayer and just having a prayer read over the loudspeaker is a violation of the Establishment Clause. Now, when we look at previous court decisions involving religion in schools, we looked in 1943 where the mandatory flag salute in schools was also considered a violation of the Establishment Clause. In particular, Jehovah Witnesses bring about this particular Supreme Court case that believing that saluting the flag was similar to worshiping an idol, which was a direct uh, violation of their rights, and the Supreme Court agreed. In addition, in 1948, the Supreme Court is also going to declare that teaching religious instruction during public school hours was unconstitutional. Notice that uh, these are dealing with public schools. Private schools can certainly read prayers, especially religious schools are going to be reading prayers in the morning, uh, may even be conducting religious services during the day. They are allowed to do that because, again, they are religious, they are private, they are not being funded by public tax dollars. So keep that in mind as well. Ultimately, the decision is going to be 6-1 in favor of the plaintiffs. And, of course, the SCOTUS is going to rule in this particular case that it was a violation of the Establishment Clause as this was considered a religious activity conducted by government officials to advance religious beliefs. Even though it wasn't favoring necessarily a particular religion, it was advancing religious beliefs. And the Supreme Court justices in the majority opinion are even going to relate, wasn't this the reason why you had colonists such as the Puritans going over to the New World, hence aka now the United States, to escape uh, countries that had a state-sponsored religion. So they're going to also, again, declare that having an establishment clause was a created to stop the government from having an official church. And one way you do that is by not having a government-sponsored prayer, not having a publicly funded school, have such a prayer, even if it is voluntarily, because again, this was considered a religious activity that was advancing religious beliefs, even though it was very non-denominational, but nevertheless religious, and the Supreme Court justices seeing this as a violation. Ultimately, the big takeaway here is that provisions of the United States uh, Constitution's Bill of Rights are continually being interpreted to balance the power of government and the civil liberties of individuals. At the end of the day, school sponsorship of religious activities violates the Establishment Clause. But again, it's important to note that nothing prohibits students from engaging in prayer themselves as long as the school is not directly involved or sponsoring it in any shape, way, or form.